In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. Today, we celebrate the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, the season of the church year in which we follow Jesus as his disciples and witness his miracles, listen to his teachings, as they are brought to us through the evangelist, St. Mark, this year. Let us prepare ourselves to meet with Christ in this Eucharist as we acknowledge our sins now and as we ask God for the grace of his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundations of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no further. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep, on a cushion. They woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind and the sea. Quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this uh, 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, St. Mark describes for us a very interesting and, and a dramatic scene about Jesus being asleep on a cushion in a boat during a storm while the apostles are panicking. Mark's gospel is showing us something very important here. So Jesus' disciples are frightened by this sudden storm. He tells us there's this sharp contrast between the disciples' terror and Jesus' peace and calm. Jesus is sleeping, untroubled, even with that storm going on. So the apostles' words to Jesus tell us a lot. They know Jesus well enough by now to dare to wake him, but their words to him are almost um, angry, kind of accusing Jesus of being indifferent and questioning his care for them. Well, what do they expect Jesus to do? It's a storm. It's an act of nature. So are they more frightened by the storm, or are they troubled by what they think Jesus, they think of Jesus' inattentiveness to their needs? Good question. Well, St. Mark offers evidence of Jesus' power and authority as he calms the storm, because truly this is uh, the kind of power over over nature is a sign of divinity. Who else but God can can calm a storm? So St. Mark tells us that Jesus rebukes that storm, and the storm obeys. Calmness and peace follow his rebuke. Now, it's, a, it's, it's important to remember that Jesus rebuked demons when he expelled them. The demons caused chaos and trouble, just as the storm caused chaos and trouble as well. So Jesus rebuked them, 
And in each situation, Jesus' power and authority is a sign of his divinity. Obviously, we hear that the apostles are are left wondering about Jesus' identity. They're still not sure at this time yet of who he really is. They see before them a, a man who, who acts with authority, the authority and power of God. So we heard them say and wonder, who, who then is this? Who then is this? Who even the wind and the sea obey? Yes. Who is this? This gospel is a metaphor for us. It's an example for our lives. All through our lives, we are in a boat of sorts. Storms of life are rage, raging all about us. Problems, sickness, hunger, unemployment, you name it, it's all around us. And like the disciples, we sometimes believe, we sometimes believe that God is not concerned, like Jesus sleeping on a cushion through it all. Although that's never true, that Jesus is unconcerned or sleeping, we should hope that our relationship is with Jesus is as familiar as the apostles was. And if we think, if we even think that Jesus is sleeping or unconcerned, that we would be comfortable comfortable enough to wake Jesus and present him our needs. In other words, pray, pray. Jesus did not chide his disciples for waking him. Instead, he chided them for their lack of faith. When we bring our worries to God in prayer, we might just begin to learn to see things from God's perspective. In prayer, we don't change God, although we always like to tell God what to do when we pray. In prayer, God changes us. God changes us to help us trust him more, as he always knows what we need, and he always has our best interest in heart. And so we pray. Please join me now as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in the one who made heaven and earth, Let us give voice to our needs and the needs of all creation in prayer. For the church, that we may be a beacon of peace and comfort to all those who cry out for refuge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. That we may respond generously and sympathetically to those needs of those who have lost family, homes, or possessions in storms, floods, or tornadoes, and other natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the limited resource of fresh water may be shared equitably with those in need all over the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For immigrants, refugees, and all those who suffer from discrimination, that we may be a community of refuge and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick and for the intentions enrolled on our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, that they may come into God's kingdom of light, love, and peace, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For in the intentions of good health for Donna Sensor and all of our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, ever present in our lives, in our times of need, increase in us the gift of faith in you. As your son navigated the boat through the stormy waters by teaching his disciples the importance of faith, may we never fail to trust in your mercy and love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, and you have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George, Leo, Thomas, and Gregory Gordon, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other now a sign of Christ's peace to us all.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for celebrating this Mass with us on this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to all of our ministers, to Teresa for our being our lector, and Mikhail for lifting for managing our cameras, and Evan David for providing us with music. I hope you're enjoying this uh, summer season and this vacation time, and I hope that it always is uh, enjoyable, restful, and safe for you. And so if you are celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something good and special going on in your life, as always, our best wishes to you. And if you are down and out with something heavy weighing on your heart, please know that we do pray for you and our prayers go with you. And so as we go forth on this 13th, or 12th, I'm sorry, 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us do so with God's grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.